Hey everybody, this is A7X Fan Ben, and this is my Naval Books, my Naval History Book Collection review video. So I apologize in advance if you're expecting Pirate CSG content. This is one of the only videos I'll ever make for this channel that's not entirely about Pirate CSG. But the Naval books I've read in my life have had a huge impact on the type of games I've played in Pirates. It's helped me like Pirates as a game way more when you get into the Naval History side of things. So. And this is a video I've been wanting to make for a while, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. It's one I've looked forward to, to for a long time. I haven't really talked about my love of naval history as much lately as I did kind of in the early days when I read a lot of these books. So it's gonna be fun. You can check out affiliate links to any of these books or all of them, uh, or at least most of them probably in the description below if you want to help out the channel, help out me, and uh, educate yourself on the age of sail in naval history. So. Without further ado, I'll get right into it. You see the first one here. I'm basically going to go through um, all the books. I've got big stacks here. I counted uh, 26 books total. I actually haven't read all of them. Most of this final stack is stuff I actually haven't read. But I'm going to start with the best one. So this is not the first one I read. I'll get to that one later. And you've probably already seen it from my intro video if you've seen that on this channel. But the best one I've read is To Rule the Waves by Arthur Herman. This is beyond epic. This is ridiculous. Uh, I'm just going to hype up these books as much as I want. This one is my favorite of all time. How the British Navy Shaped the Modern World. So this one is pretty thick. Um, and it covers it actually covers beyond just the age of sail. So it starts around 1568 uh, with Captain John Hawkins and uh, San Juan de Ulloa, and then it goes all the way up into the 1900s. So this one is fantastic. It gives a really in-depth look at the Royal Navy. Uh, kind of Part of the reason I love this one so much is because um, he really hypes up the Royal Navy and its impact on the world and things like that and how epic it was. So and I'm, I vibe with that hugely because I've always been a big fan of Britain and the Royal Navy because of books like this and the history and the military history. So. Uh, so it really it really tells an amazing story and I think one of the one of the cool things about this book is it ties it ties it into like world events and things like that and uh, it really shows the impact that the Royal Navy had on the world because most people just know them you know it's a great military force but they actually had a dramatic impact on the world we live in today so to rule the waves is actually my favorite uh, pretty much my favorite nonfiction book arguably or at least my favorite historical nonfiction book so this is the one I would recommend the most especially if you already love Great Britain or if you like playing the English in Pirate CSG this one will make you want to play them constantly uh, all the time basically so it's kind of a love letter to uh, the Royal Navy and the, its history and stuff like that so really amazing book so Arthur Herman great author he actually wrote this one too this one I'm just gonna go over quick uh, this is his other book. So this one's not about naval history, so kind of a tangent here. How the Scots Invented the Modern World. This one is pretty good. The subject matter is much less interesting to me, but I still found it to be a pretty good book. So I would recommend it in general, but in terms of naval history, it doesn't have much there. But still a pretty good book overall. So now we get into Trafalgar, of course. So this one, someone actually posted on the Facebook group in, here in 2019 about this one by Osprey Publishing. Trafalgar 1805. So this one is a nice book that's got a lot of it's got a lot of illustrations, things like that. Some of them in full color. It's got battle diagrams. So this gives a really nice overview of the Battle of Trafalgar and a really unique take on it. Um, so this one is just great. It's not very long. It's less than 100 pages. It's like part of a warfare series, I believe. And I think I've read at least a few of the other ones, maybe about like World War II and stuff. So this one I would highly recommend. It's a good introduction to Trafalgar book as well. So there's a ton of books on that battle, of course. So this one is pretty sweet. HMS Victory Pocket Manual 1805. The gold lettering on the front. So this one, this one might be a little less common, I suppose, or less well known. So this goes over like living on HMS Victory and living in the Royal Navy during the time of Horatio Nelson, their greatest admiral. So that one is pretty cool. Uh, I would recommend the other two Rule the Waves and the other Trafalgar book more, but this is one. This is another one. I think this came with a DVD, the HMS Victory Story. 
this one's kind of the one, kind of similar to the one I just talked about, but it's got pictures, obviously full color pictures and stuff like that. So another book about HMS Victory. You can kind of see why the English are my favorite faction. Uh, this one's actually historical fiction, Sharp's Trafalgar by Bernard Cornwell. And this one was pretty good. I don't remember it as well as uh, some of the other ones. I'm not super into historical fiction because in general, I'd rather read the actual nonfiction. I'd rather just read the full, I'd rather read something that doesn't have any fiction whatsoever. So that one wasn't my favorite, but if you like historical fiction, definitely recommended. This one is incredible. I, I would say this is the best Trafalgar book I've read, I think. Um, these are just all the books I own, uh, Naval History. I've actually read a bunch more, probably between one and two dozen more than you'll see in this video um, that I got from the library, mostly back in high school, maybe some in middle school and college, but yeah, I've probably read probably one to two dozen library books uh, that I, of course I don't have right now for this video and at least one of those on Trafalgar but this one is this one is amazing Roy Adkins Nelson's Trafalgar the battle that changed the world this one is really amazing because it gives like a huge build up and then the chapters on the battle don't disappoint either so it's really in depth it's not too dissimilar in a way obviously the subject matter is the same as the one we saw earlier but it gives a much more um, it's a mu it's much more text based uh, take on the battle. There are some picture sections, but this one's kind of more comprehensive and it's not based on pictures and diagrams as much. So arguably not quite as good as like an intro, but I would say it's a better, it's definitely a better book. So, and this one, the Osprey Publishing, that one's great, but it's almost like a, it's more similar to like a Wikipedia type thing, which is totally fine. But, and this one is just, I would recommend this one a little bit more, but they're both amazing. So, I mean, I recommend both captures the din, confusion, and sheer carnage of the battle. So that one's one of the highest recommended ones. And this is the one that started it all. So if you've seen my introduction video on this YouTube channel, you'll know that this book is one of the founding reasons why I've been so obsessed with Pirate CSG for a long time now, almost a decade of like obsession, I guess you could call it. So Andrew Lambert, of Smithsonian Books, War at Sea in the Age of Sail, 1650 to 1850. This one is, I would say, maybe the best intro book on the topic of, uh, obviously the title, uh, Naval Warfare in the Age of Sail. It's not too long. It's pretty easy to digest for the most part. It gets a little bit complex at times. So it's just over 200 pages. There are pictures, some in full color. There's diagrams. I do like the diagrams in this book too. They're very simple, but they're still good. Um, so this is, like I said, this is probably the best intro book on the topic that I've read. We'll get into a few more that are more in depth, but this is the one that started it all for me. And this is the one I've read the most. I would say I've read this at least five times. I'm not sure how many, maybe six or seven. So this one, just an all time classic for me. So I got this, I just randomly managed to just see it at Barnes and Noble in, a, I think it was around 2005. I think that's when it came out. And, uh, it just sounded and looked really interesting. So, and I'm super happy I picked it up. If I hadn't bought this book that day, there is a chance I wouldn't be, you know, as obsessed with Pirate CSG, or maybe I wouldn't have come back to the game. This may have played a role in me coming back to the game in 2010, 2011 when I reread it, but I'm not sure. But anyway, definitely one of the best. And if you're looking to start on this topic without, you know, reading 500 pages, um, or like getting multiple books or anything. This is a great intro book for it. And these ones are great. This is a kind of like a two part series by Peter Padfield. Uh, I was lucky to get these as a gift, I believe. Maritime Supremacy and the Opening of the Western Mind, Naval Campaigns that Shaped the World. So this one is incredible. Um, I don't remember them as much, these two, uh, this pair. I don't know if it's because I read them too fast. I think. It's probably because I read, I had already read a lot of other naval history books before I read these. Um, so maybe that's why I don't like, they're not as distinctive because I didn't read them as long ago, um, but they're still really good. And if you got these as a pair, um, I'm, this must be the first one, I'm pretty sure they would be a good intro as well. Of course, there's two books and they're a lot longer than War at Sea in the Age of Sail. And this is the second one, Maritime Power and the Struggle for Freedom. Naval campaigns that shaped the modern world 1788 to 1851. It's obviously time of Napoleon and after, pretty much. 
which of course was total chaos. So this one is excellent as well. And there is a picture section in this one, and I think the other one too. So that gives a little bit of context on it too, or at least, you know, you can see some of the ships and what they looked like in the illustrations and stuff like that. So yeah, Copenhagen and the Nile both get a chapter, as they should, Glorious First of June. So really great books there. So that stack is gonna be probably impossible to beat here, but I'll move into the second stack try to stand up again. The stacks on the table are so high, I gotta stand up to, to look at it um, or to show it properly. But first I have this, this is super random, but I got this weird bookmark thing where, I'll go over this one first. Back when I was reading uh, To Rule the Waves, which is uh, my favorite, I, I was at like a cottage on a lake and I didn't have like a bookmark, I don't think. So I took this blue napkin and used it as a bookmark. And then it's been like this weird, thing I do where whenever I read a naval history book I always use this blue napkin as like a bookmark so except for maybe the last one or two where I've used this cool uh, Barnes & Noble gift card this is pretty old I don't know when this is from okay it says 2011 a in the corner there so and that's kind of that's the year I got back into pirate CSG actually so this one's got the skull and crossbones on the on the gift cards it's cool I mean I already I used it a long time ago but it's it's you know very fitting for for a bookmark for these. So I guess this is one of the most recent ones I read then, since the bookmark is in this one. The Fighting Timorare by Sam Willis. Might be getting the name wrong. Um, so this one is about that one ship and she had an incredible journey. This is one of the more, you know, famous paintings from the from the Age of Sail or, you know, it's the beginning of the Age of Steam. So this one is cool. I don't have many books and I haven't read many books that are like the biography of a ship. HMS Victory, of course, the exception. I've got two books on her. Uh, both of those are short, though. So it's pretty unique to have such a large book where the subject matter is just one vessel. So you can you can kind of get an idea of how iconic and legendary this ship uh, is and was. So the Battle of Trafalgar and the ship that inspired J.M.W. Turner's most beloved painting. So that one is pretty highly recommended. Not quite as much as uh, the Peter Padfield books. Nelson's Trafalgar and To Rule the Waves, those are even better, I would say, at least in my opinion. This one, speaking of Roy Adkins, this is Roy Adkins with Leslie Adkins. I think that's his sister, I believe. Uh, the War for All the Oceans. This one is pretty cool. This is one of the only ones that was a little disappointing. I can't remember exactly why. I read this quite a while ago. It's been a long time. It's almost 500 pages. I think it was because it focused a lot on, like, post-Trafalgar stuff. So, like... If you don't know already, the Battle of Trafalgar, the British uh, beat the Franco-Spanish, and after that, uh, British naval power was relatively uh, uncontested, at least realistically on like a grand scale after 1805. Um, and it's one of the reasons Napoleon wasn't able to win uh, his wars in the end. Um, so this one focuses a lot on like post-Trafalgar stuff, which is cool, but it's 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 cool that it's unique in that way, but at the same time, the stuff that happened before and during Trafalgar, like the 1790s and the 1800s, were more interesting than like post 1805 in terms of naval warfare, at least in my opinion. Um, but that being said, it is unique in that it it does cover a lot of post Trafalgar stuff, whereas these books are mostly pre Trafalgar, or of course Trafalgar itself. So, so. Unique. I wouldn't recommend this one quite as much, but it's kind of, it might just be kind of my, you know, my opinion on it. So still a great book overall. And this is, this is massive. So the command of the ocean, and it might sound familiar. My command, command the oceans game was named after this book, the huge game I played in 2017. This one is kind of like a Bible of uh, naval history, if you will. A naval history of Britain, 1649 to 1815 NAM Roger. So this one's a bit older. Uh, it's obviously huge. Uh, I can start to look at page counting. There's huge like index and bibliography and references and like rates rates of pay. He's got rates of pay for the different ranks on the different ship sizes and fourth, fourth, fifth rates, stuff like that. Conclusion. So the actual book goes to around 600 pages. And it's, it's pretty dense too. There's not I mean, there's a lot of text on each page. Uh, there's almost no pictures. There might not be any pictures. So this one is really comprehensive and dense. Uh, my only 
thing about this one and why it's not my favorite, or not really even close actually, um, is because it doesn't really go over specifics of battles that much. So that's my only critique of this one, at least for me personally. Other people, again, you might not want to read about the battles as much as like the administrative stuff and the political stuff and like why things were they were the way they were. Um, so this one's broken into sections. So he's got different time sections. Then it says like social history for that time period. So that's kind of like not why I'm reading these books. It's important, but I like the operations chapters. Um, but those were usually some of the shortest chapters. So that that's what I was kind of saying. My only issue with this book, he's, he doesn't really talk about the specific, you know, events and tactics of each battle and the build up to them and stuff like that. There's definitely, that definitely gets covered, but these other books do a better job, in my opinion, of really talking about like the nitty gritty of each battle, like spending, you know, a hundred pages on like a five hour battle is actually what I prefer rather than, you know, the social history of Britain during that time period, which I find a bit less interesting. So just kind of my take on it. Uh, still recommended and definitely one of the most famous books on British naval history or naval history in general for that matter. So these two I'm going to gloss over because they're not about naval history specifically. I just included them. Uh, Warfare in the 18th Century by Jeremy Black. So that one is that one is pretty good. So this one, part of the reason I got this one is because it's by um, Smithsonian Books. So they're the ones that uh, Smithsonian History of Smithsonian History of Warfare, that's the series um, where w War at Sea in the Age of Sail came from. So, so I've got these two, and then I've also got War and Warfare in the 17th century. So I read those two pretty recently. I want to say this was 2018 and maybe part of 2017. I read these pretty recently. They go over much more land battles than, than naval, but they're still pretty good books overall. I'm not as interested in, in the land stuff, but I wanted to read them, and they were both pretty good. So, And they've got the same style of like diagrams and pictures as the other, as War at Sea in the Age of Sail. So that's pretty cool. So, again, good intro books. Not ridiculously dense, um, but still tons of information. Part of the problem with these, for me, was like each sentence would, rec would uh, mention so many names of places and people that I had never heard of before that like it was just... It's crazy complicated. Like the Thirty Years' War in the 1600s is just so complicated. It's like, it's it's crazy. It's, it's uh, I don't even know what to say about it. Um, it's just incredibly dense and complicated. And there's like three phases to it. And each phase is like distinct, but like uh, they also connect together, of course. So it's pretty wild. But anyway, so the, the Last Armada is one I read not too long ago, either 2017 or 18. So this one is pretty cool. It's about a very specific invasion of England, um, or I should say Ireland. Queen Elizabeth, Juan de Agua, and Hugh O'Neill's Hugh O'Neill, the, the story of the 100-day Spanish invasion. So this one is pretty sweet. Uh, like I said, it goes over that one specific event. I mean, it wasn't a one-day thing, but this is it's a pretty cool thing. It kind of reminds me of when they talk about one thing for an entire book, it, it feels more like a story than when they try to cover all warfare of the 18th century. So I would say I would recommend this one based on how good of a story it tells. The guy's a really good storyteller. Um, so this one is recommended. This one is not too much about naval warfare, actually. I should definitely say that, because even though the cover says Last Armada and there's ships on the cover, it's mostly about the land theater and how, how the invasion didn't work out essentially so it's a really interesting story though and kind of it's not like well known compared to a lot of other uh, military conflicts and whatnot so I think it was quite interesting and like I said one of the better like story books if you will it's not none of its fiction of course but it's it's pretty great this one um, I think this was a gift too I want to say Thomas Jefferson and the Tripoli Pirates this one was written not too long ago uh, came out this decade Brian Kilmade the Forgotten War That Changed American History. So this is one of the few that I have that's specifically about American naval history. This one is really good. I would recommend this one, especially uh, a lot of people watching this, of course, live in the States. So I would definitely recommend this one. It is quite interesting and gives a good take on kind of what happened over there in the Mediterranean Sea and things like that. And it, it talks about the diplomacy and the kind of the politics of it too, which is quite interesting to read about. So 
it's not it's not like super heavy on the actual naval combat uh, like some of the ones from the first stack but still a good book and then now we're just getting into kind of some of the random ones um, true stories of pirates is kind of a kind of like a middle school type reading material I guess you could say maybe elementary school probably got this uh, probably got this in uh, like fifth or sixth grade who knows anyway that one is good though Lucy Lucy Lethbridge so that one's actually pretty neat especially we've got a kind of a junior pirate if you will if anybody's watching it has like a 12 year old that's already into pirates or wants to get into it that's a cool book uh, this one all about history the book of pirates legends and treasures of the golden age of piracy so this one is actually one I, I got not too long ago, and I used this a bunch in like 2017 and early 2018 to help me make some of the historical customs, actually. Robert Culliford, William Kidd. So a lot of these, I don't know if all of them are in there yet, but most if not all of these historical pirates are now in my custom set. This one is really cool. It's more like a magazine, uh, and obviously it's really nice because it's got full page pictures, full color. So this is a good intro book to piracy overall. Um, if you've known about pirates for a long time, you might not learn a ton, but it's still pretty detailed, and it's just it's pretty beautiful. It's pretty well done overall. Um, I want to say there were a few mistakes. There's, it, it gets a little weird. Um, there, this is like one of the only books where like there might have been a few errors actually, and like early on, there's like a picture of like ships of the line, and like I think the caption says they're like their uh, pirate ships. Maybe that's not what it says, I guess, but still. So, anyway, so that one is pretty cool as well. Good intro book to piracy. And just as a random one, I've got, just for good measure, I got out my junior novelizations of Curse of the Black Pearl and Dead Man's Chest. So, I got the kid books for the first two Pirates of the Caribbean movies. So, and then we've got the classic picture section. Probably got these at like a book fair. A long time ago or something I don't even know so anyway so I didn't get the one for at world's end but anyway so I always thought these were weirdly lame because uh because you'd always rather watch the movie and like if you've already seen the movie before you read these which is almost always the case these just I don't know it's weirdly lame to read like the dialogue or like an alternate version of the dialogue from the from the movie it's nothing against the author it's just uh it's just kind of weird, so better off rewatching the movie, at least in my opinion. But anyway, still kind of entertaining for like a kid, I suppose. So this stack is what I haven't read, so I can't recommend any of these yet. Uh, the Peninsular War, 1807 to 1814, a concise military history. So that gives you an idea of how much stuff happened then, concise, and it's like well over 300 pages. Looks nice and dense. And that's, again, this is post Trafalgar. This is you know, this must be mostly the land warfare on the Spanish Peninsula. Um, so post Trafalgar. So this one, I don't know when I'll read this one. Could be a long time, but I got these. Some, I got three out of the next four, including this one. I got at a used bookstore. So they were probably, I don't know. Oh, this one says six dollars. So, so that's cool. Uh, this one was actually a gift. Uh, this is the next one on my list, pretty much. Not necessarily the next book I'm going to read. I've been reading a lot of um, self-development nonfiction the past year or two, or more than the past year or two. But the next time I read a naval history book, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the one, or, or at least any kind of history book. Most Secret and Confidential, Intelligence in the Age of Nelson. So this one, I think, could be really interesting, because I've never really delved deep into the intelligence side of things. So it's going to be... I think a quite interesting take on it and uh, just a different kind of a different kind of approach to covering that um, the naval history in the Age of Nelson topic so on that painting of course Battle of Copenhagen and this one is another one I got at the, the bookstore this is only six dollars for this massive biography of Napoleon post a picture of this one and some of the other ones on miniature trading I think a while ago yes original price is 45 bucks and it's in like it's in like pretty much like new condition so I know a lot more about Nelson than Napoleon so this will be interesting to get out sometime kind of intimidating but hopefully someday I'll get through that huge stack 
And then this one I actually started and I stopped reading it because uh, it's not really about like the warfare as much. So it's, it's a bit different. It's more about like the social and political stuff, which I find a bit less interesting usually. Um, so it's about the Spanish Empire, rise and fall. Um, so I'm still looking forward to it, reading it someday. But for now, I'd rather focus on other things. This was another gift. Ships and Shipwrecks of the Americas. A history based on underwater archaeology. So this one is really cool. I don't know, this might not be like the type of book you might read all the way through. Because there's a ton of text on each page. Pretty big book overall. Or even if the pages, it's not even 300 pages, but it's uh, it's just absolutely huge pages overall. And they've got a lot of nice pictures, some full color, stuff like that. I've always been interested in shipwrecks. As a kid, we've, we've always had this... Uh, this hardcover Titanic book that I would always look at. So Robert Ballard and seeing some of the other ex underwater explorers um, always piqued my interest. Even just, just the pictures of ships underwater and like wrecks is just amazing. Just the, just the photography of it alone is amazing, let alone like bringing stuff up and analyzing it and learning things from it. So that one looks really cool. And and that one, so this is just for the Americas. Imagine if it was ships and shipwrecks of the world, or of the, you know, the European coast and the coast of Great Britain, things like that. It'd be even more massive. So I counted 26 books here. Uh, they, a lot of them are awesome. Obviously, can't recommend this stack yet. I mean, I'm sure most or all of them are awesome. But anyway, so I'm just going to kind of turn some of them over here. So let me know if you liked this video. Uh, you can comment below if you've read any of these. Uh, comment your, your recommendation if you've read any of them or more than one of them, things like that. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Pirate CSG content. Like I said, this is one of the only non-Pirate CSG videos I'll ever be doing. Um, and that, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I said that. I'm glad I'm still recording because uh, these books, especially this one, they really had a big impact on me playing. I mean, they they inspired me to do the historical fantasy scenarios that I did mostly from like 2010 and 2011. Um, and then later on, they inspired me to do the huge campaign games. So I played, I think I'm at like 14 huge games, which I define as a game of at least a thousand points or more total points in play. So some of those probably wouldn't have happened if not for my dense reading of uh, naval history and books like Nelson's Trafalgar, one of the best ones I've read. So these stacks really represent part of my love for, for Pirate CSG in a way because they've influenced me to play more, to play bigger, and to play often. So definitely recommended to rule the waves, my favorite without a doubt, and my, my one I re recommend the most. So. Anyway, thanks for checking out this video. Give it a like, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you again soon for more piracy.